A throttle controller for your 4x4, or pedal boosters as sometimes call it. Why should I get one? Is it worth it? What difference does it make? Let's find out, coming up in this video. Hi everyone, Henke from 4Wheeling SA and today we'll be reviewing a throttle controller. So this um, throttle controller I was um, given by Power Plus and they asked me to test it and this is what we exactly what we're going to do in this video. Okay, so first of all we need to understand what the throttle controller does. Now with old cars you would have had, I call it like a drive-by wire, so it's a direct coupling between your, um, between your pedal and the fuel system so the more you or the faster you depress the pedal the faster it will put in fuel but these days everything is electronic so what should what does it do so basically it's a, um, a signal that's being sent from your pedal to your ECU and that happens at, at, a, at a specific speed so what does a standard vehicle do it gets the signal even if a foot is flat down it's get the signal gets sent in a ramp up version to the ECU, which means it's not 100% open immediately. Um, I've put up a curve now that you can see what a standard um, signal would look like. This brings us to the throttle controller. So it's being plugged in between your ECU and your pedal. Um, it's a very quick and easy installation. Um, um, there's various videos out there that shows you how it's done, but it's very quick. It uh, takes you five minutes to plug it in. And that basically takes the signal and it manipulates it, the signal from the from the pedal, and then sends it through the to the um, ECU in a different way. I've put up the graphs again, and then you will see the, for the different modes what it does. And basically, the one that I've got tested has got various modes. I think for each mode, it's got like nine different settings. So you can basically decide on which point of the curve you will be and it's a bit of a, a preference how do you want your vehicle to drive how, how do you want it to feel so the main differences that's happening is that the input is is smaller that you have to put in give on your, your pedal and also the acceleration is quicker because now you take away that um that ramp up um stage so it's it's much quicker to respond okay now that we know what the throttle um controller does let's look at some 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 tests to help you to understand what's the difference and where you can where you can use it just some background for the test what i did is i've marked a length or whatever of i think it's 100 around 150 meters or something like that um each time just using the same distance and then i took the time measured the time that it took me to from a standstill until i passed a specific um marker Okay, so for the test, what I did is I did three test runs. The first run I did with um, just the vehicle being in normal mode, no changes, whatever, from a throttle response or whatever. Um, and this is what, what the results was. The second test I've done, was um, putting the vehicle in its own power mode and basically leaving the throttle controller on on normal so no input from the throttle controller and this is what i got from it the last test i did was um putting the throttle controller on its most um, aggressive setting. I think it's a 3.9 or something. And um, yeah, this is what happened. Okay, so from the test result, it was, um, it's clear that the throttle controller does make um, quite a difference look the test is not it's not scientifically 100 percent correct but i think the whole it's more the idea behind it to show you what happens i've tried to pull away the same way each time you can see with the throttle response 
um, on its maximum, you, there is a bit of wheel spin, so you might lose some time there. But I think the it just shows the idea of of what is happening, and yes, it does make a difference versus standard. Yes, the standard um, power um, improvement is also there, um, but yeah, I feel there's just more settings on the throttle controller. So how would I use this throttle controller in a 4x4 environment? So um, I did recently use it in sand. And um, yeah, here's a video of me doing obstacle in sand and just my, my thoughts on the controller just afterwards. Okay, so I've just completed a very sandy obstacle at Paradise 4x4. Link somewhere up here. Um, if you want to have a look, but just on the throttle controller in sand It does make a big difference. It's just there's not that delay when you put your foot down. You just get the power Instantly, it's not more power. Remember that but It's just it's quicker to respond and that response is very nice if you Suddenly in a cross axle and you need the power you just Tap on it and then you go. I did put it in the most uh, aggressive mode. I think it's A9. I think I put it in A8 or something but really worthwhile for sand. There's also the economy mode which you can also it, it's it's much softer than the standard economy mode in your vehicle. I've not really tested but the theory behind it is, is that you can use it in rocky situations where you just need a little bit more um, throttle input. Usually I would crawl obstacles but um, it just if you need to accelerate you can do it very 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 softly which I believe will be beneficial for your vehicle is there's not that much um, stresses on your drivetrain. For example, when you start to use your your, um, your traction control, you need to apply power, but you just need a little bit of power for the wheels to start spinning and then it will grip again. But if you do it at a very high input from your from your throttle, there will be much more power sent to the wheels, which causes more stress on your components. So to conclude, is it worth it? I would say it's worth it. Um, there's a lot of specials actually at this stage in the country, so um, I think it's 1,500 that you can get it for. And if it's uh, there's a new model coming out, which should be just below 2,000 um, rand. Um, I believe it's got some more features on it, like uh, anti hijack or anti steel function or something like that. Um, for me, it's worth it. Why would you do it? It's just that it gives you more control over your vehicle which is exactly what you want to do when you're off-road. You want control over your vehicle. Um, the vehicle needs to do what you tell it to do. It shouldn't run out of control. Um, where I would think is good situations is like I already mentioned in rocks, we just need a little bit of input. And then the other thing is in sand, where you just need it faster, the, the power or the availability of your power. And I've used very successfully, I've forgot that it's a stage on a, on a cross axle to engage my diff lock which would have made it easier but I forgot and I was in the obstacle and I needed power luckily for me it was in the in almost the most aggressive mode and I could just put my foot down and the power was there and I, I was able to get through the through the obstacle so yeah I think it's really something to look into just want to thank um, power plus for um, lending or, or giving me a, a, a unit to test I've put down a link to their website below but yeah, make up your, it's your decision at the end of the day. But for me, it's worth it. I feel it's not going to add anything or create extra stretches on my vehicle. So at this stage, I'm, I'm enjoying the unit. Um, on my day-to-day -day driving, I'm using auto mode. For me, it's the, it's, it's, it's the nicest to drive. Um, and I think that's the nice thing. You can set it up the, for the your vehicle the way you want it to be. So yeah, that's it for another episode from Four Wheeling SA. This um, time focusing on a bit of a product review. Thanks again for everybody watching. Really appreciate the support. Um, yeah, see you on the next video.